I'm very excited, uh, very happy to be here for the presentation and uh, especially excited to show you guys the, the paradigm system and how easy it can make uh, hip arthroscopy. And we're going to talk really predominantly about the management of the labral tear itself. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about a subspine impingement that I have a couple of uh, quick clips on, uh, but I think the important aspects are really about labral management. The key to anatomic repair is, is simple. You want to preserve as much tissue as you possibly can. You really want to make a big, big focus about rese resealing, recreating that labral seal. It's not like when we do shoulder label repairs where it's, uh, yeah, you just want to create that bumper, but it doesn't really matter if you sort of indent the labrum a little bit. Uh, I think the other thing that we've learned over the last few years is really the fact that we really got to be careful with the capsulotomy, especially in those patients that happen to have either some component of dysplasia, a lot of the younger women in particular, even in the face of normal anatomy, you really got to be careful. And probably most important, and, and one of the things that's hardest to do is to really just limit the resection of the tissue. Try to repair what you have. Try to work with what you have. And a couple, uh, I'll show you one technique that I use quite a bit for that. And this is what it should look like. When you finally take the traction off and you reduce that hip, it really should look like that. There should not be any buckling. There should be very little, if any, indentation. And you really should be able to recreate that labral seal. So one of the key things is obviously proper insertion of the anchor. So that photo is showing us that in a, in a situation where you have a straight anchor delivery device, you're sort of beholden to whatever angle you can get with the portal that you've already established. You, you can use fluoroscopy actually to fine tune the position, but the beauty of, of the paradigm system is that the, the curved anchor placement is just really beautiful because it really allows you to play around with the position. The footprint is minimal, so even if you err on the side of getting really close and you start to kind of undermine the cartilage a tiny bit, you can see that pretty quickly and you can redirect. So you really have a lot of angled uh, ability to really get around the labrum and put in multiple anchors as many as you really need to without running out of space. So here's an example of a patient that I recently treated whose labrum was just very, very redundant, almost like frayed, almost looked like it was just sort of devitalized. And so in these situations, what, what I used to do 20 years ago when we first started doing these is we'd just take the shaver to this thing and debris and leave whatever little remnant there was, and then we would do a repair on the remnant. Uh, and so I don't think that really worked very well. I think those are the patients that perhaps you should consider a reconstruction on. But I'll show you a technique that I use. The video on the left is showing what I do with the ablator is I really, before I ever put a shaver in there, I will use the ablator to sort of tighten up. And a lot of times what, uh, what happens with these labral uh, tissues that are sort of injured, they have a lot of fluid in them, a lot of H2O content. And by using the ablator, you're able to really tighten it and almost like reshape the labrum so that you can kind of see as I play around with this thing, it really looks more and more like just a simple labral detachment rather than that big flap that we were worried about before. And you can imagine that if I had taken a shaver to this thing, the whole thing would have been gone. So here's an example of, uh, of using that curved, uh, the curved delivery device. You can see how close I can get. And then my, my technique generally is pretty simple. I just use a simple loop uh, just right around the labrum. Um, in some situations, we'll get a little bit more fancy and I can kind of show you a couple of tricks. And then uh, and the key is, as you can see on the right, is to really not imbricate that labrum. You don't want to over tighten it. In fact, I almost want it to be just a little bit on the sloppy side as we tie it down so that when you put the hip back into position, the labrum almost engulfs the head and really captures that head and, and really creates that seal. This is a technique I call labral loop stitch, and I'm, I'm trying to come up with a, a cuter name, but basically what I do is just use a simple penetrating device. It doesn't matter what you use. But the key is this, when you pull it out, what I do is I actually have a loop of that same stitch in my hand, and then I pull it in. So what ends up happening is that we have a loop that's gonna hold the stitch in that position 
and it's really hard to over tighten it. Uh, the only bad thing is if you have to, uh, if you do this technique, you're going to have to do half hitches, obviously, because it's not going to slide through and you're not going to be able to use a sliding locking knot. But that's absolutely fine. I think we're all pretty familiar with that idea. So this is a technique summary, uh, and it's about a five-minute video. So this is the uh, the FT anchor, which is awesome that we were just talking about, and there's a couple of different variants. And it really, the, the footprint on both is really small. But the key is um, to be able to get in there effectively and re-angle. The other, um, the other thing that's really nice is this. the blade is just awesome. You're able to put the blade in there with, as a blunt instrument essentially, and then the sheath pulls back and the blade is exposed. So it really gives you a really nice ability to control your capsulotomy in a situation where you just have a simple layer repair and you don't have any significant um, subspine impingement or anything like that, you can really get away with a very, very nice capsulotomy. The cannulas that, that we're using are the, the flex cannulas are really, really nice because it allows you to put in large instruments that have curves in them. And I'll show you in a second here with the shaver. This is a chondroplasty. And we're not going to talk too much about this chondroplasty other than just to show you briefly that the curved shavers work very effectively. And you're able to put in quite a bit curve through the, through the cannula and not have to struggle. Um, here's, the, here's the anchor insertion and so you can kind of see that it's got about a it's a 25 or 30 degree curve i forget the exact angle but you're basically able to just sort of play around with exactly where do you want this thing do you want to angle it 10 degrees one way 10 degrees the other way it's got a very tiny footprint and you can see it's very simple to insert and it's very solid and i'm pretty simple in terms of the, the suture management issues as, as i mentioned I like using just the, the simple penetrators. These are the easiest things in, in my mind. And if I have good access and it's not a very tight joint, I think it's a very nice way to do it. You don't need to be aggressive and go through a huge amount of the labrum. I think sometimes a smaller area of grasping is, is nicer because it really limits the trauma to the, to the native labrum. And as I mentioned, using that loop technique, we're able to really just put it down, retention the labrum effectively without overcompensating for it. So we're able to get a, a really nice stitch. And then the other thing that's really nice uh, with, these, uh, with these cannulas is that the arthroscope fits right through it. So you can see here that I'm just reestablishing that anterior portal using my, my cannula that I've already gotten in place. So it's really easy and you can use as many as you want. You can use two or three. And here I'm completing the capsulotomy from the lateral aspect. And then now we're just gonna place a second anchor from that lateral portal. And th this is where it really comes in handy, this angled delivery, because it's such a tough angle in many cases, especially in smaller patients. And so you can really angle it, slide it in there and you see we can kind of work around the capsule and get a really nice effective anchor that's just literally perched right on the corner where you really want it. And then depending on what technique, in this case, we used the, the, just a simple sliding locking knot to penetrate through uh, in this patient that had pretty substantial tissue. We didn't have to worry about devitalizing any of the, any of the tissue. Sometimes when you've got a smaller uh, wispier labrum, then you have to use a little bit smaller device or maybe a needle type device to, to penetrate into the joint. And so that's, that's the closure of, on that lateral where the anchor was placed. In this patient, we also did a femoral neck resection. I'll talk just very briefly about that. Um, but in, in essence, these devices are, are just so nice to really be able to get around the corners and to do a limited invasiveness uh, procedure. So important aspects are, for example, here's a patient that, this is the patient that I just showed briefly, uh, the decompression of the sp subspine. And you can see that on the right, on the x-ray, uh, preoperatively, that we got immediately before starting, 
there's a very large anterior inferior iliac spine, subspine, almost a type, she's probably a type three. And you can see that by elevating and using the, the shaver and the burr in a curved fashion, a lot of times you can get around with just creating a little window in that capsule and rectus and just go right up to the area of the decompression. And you'll see here the, the final version. So you can see there's just a little window and if you use the 70 degree scope to your advantage, you can really look around that corner and just sort of confirm that you've done the decompression that you think you have. So it's an, it's an important part of most of these patients that even in the face of dysplasia or even in situations where they might have a pretty significant cam lesion, you need to look for that subspine impingement and make sure that you don't miss it. And then obviously, again, even in the space of, in the face of dysplasia, in the face of patients that have a very significant AIIS uh, subspine component, it's really important to look for the cam lesion. So look at it not only on your plain films, but I think a lot of times the MRI, the sagittal imaging will show you a little bit better uh, in many cases. So you need to look for that. It's important to realize that in the patients that have the subspine impingement, many cases their cam lesion is more anterior uh, so similar to what I'm showing here, and it's a much more distal lesion than you typically get. So it's not going to be at that anterolateral corner They're all, that we're all very familiar with, with the traditional cam sort of lesion. I think it's a little bit different uh, bony morphology in many of the AIIS impingers. So it's very important to look for it and go a little bit more distal with your decompression. The other big thing, as I, I mentioned briefly, is this idea that we we should close the capsule in many of these cases. I don't necessarily always close them. I think if we've got a stiffer patient, I think if we've done a very limited capsulotomy, I don't see the point and I don't think that that destabilizes it, but certainly in a patient that I just showed you with the subspine impingement, this was a young woman and she's certainly um, you know, relatively at risk for instability. So it's important to do a capsular closure. I usually use absorbable uh, number two vicral sutures and. There's many different devices. Even a suture penetrator works very well in many cases, which is typically what my preference would be, since it's simpler and quicker rather than some of the shuttling devices. So in summary, um, I think the key concept is that you really want to maintain that labral seal at all costs. That's so important. And whether it's the native labrum or using a reconstruction, that is certainly up for, for grabs at this point. There's a lot of discussion about is there, is there a room for a primary reconstruction in some patients? And that may be the case. I certainly don't do that in my practice. I, I would always try to do a primary repair unless there's some very obvious uh, pathology to the labrum. Minimal soft tissue resection of the labrum. So preserve the labrum at all costs. And you also need to use all the tools available for, for this. And, and whether you know the, the paradigm system is nice, there are a lot of different um, tools out there. I think the nice thing about um, this system is relatively comprehensive and it really gives you everything you need all uh, in a one-stop shop. Thank you very much. So I know one of the first questions that we have, what are uh, the qualifying factors for a reconstruction versus a repair in your opinion? As I briefly mentioned, I think primary repairs in my hands anyway are just very rare. Uh, unless the MRI to me looks like a, a very either calcified labrum or just a really tiny diminutive labrum, uh, the typical patient that would have something like that would probably be, be a, a middle-aged female with a large protrusio sort of um, over coverage situation. Um, so that would be the probably only indication in my hands for a primary. Other than that, I think that it's always worth trying. If you have a labrum that's more than four or five millimeters in size, I think it's always worth trying to do a very, you know, an effective labral repair, use as many anchors as you can, make sure and address all of the subspine, any kind of pincer, uh, focal pincer lesions, certainly cam lesions, and, and see how they do. Um, I think a lot of them, if not most of them, do very well and really don't have a secondary issue. Um, I think if they failed that part of it, where I know that there's a relative deficiency on some part of the labrum, then those are the patients that I will do uh, an allograft, and that and that's typically what I what I use now is I like using uh, 
an IT band uh, allograph to, and I usually do a, a pretty large amount of tissue. And whether you leave, um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll leave uh, some of the native tissue, and if it looks pretty reasonable, there's usually more of a focal sort of area that needs to be addressed. So I'll try to leave that native tissue in place almost as a bumper and almost give it a, a backup uh, behind it uh, with the reconstruction.